So we can start. Um, I've got 30 minutes to cover with you this lecture, and then we have 30 more minutes of group discussion on VR and education and how we can catch up with the current technology. So everything works well today. A video is playing, so we can see some uh, videos. Later. Um, can we? Actually, we can switch off the, the yeah. lights at the front. Um, my name is Eugene Chen, um, and I'm an associate professor of computer science in the department. I'm also the director of the NVIDIA Joint Lab of Mixed Reality, and the Joint Lab has about 500 projects at the moment, one ERC, one AHRC, um, and uh, actually two AHRC, and two other Chinese uh, Zhejiang province grants. Um, they're all VR related. So the results will be very exciting in the next few years. Um, one of the projects that we're creating at the NVIDIA Technology Lab is um, the um, the reconstruction of destroyed monuments, especially cultural heritage monuments in Syria, Libya, and so on. And it's called the Curious Travelers Project. So if you search online, you can see our project. And we are collecting, we're crowdsourcing worldwide photos from tourists who have actually visited the site before it's destroyed. And with that, a technology called Structure in Motion or Photogrammetry we're able to reconstruct the heritage that are completely destroyed and perhaps create a cultural feel out of it. Um, so, uh, 30 minutes and 30 minutes. So VR technology and education. In the past two years, we've seen a rise in the interest in VR, especially with um, the large corporations, like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, some so they're all investing in this technology. Um, so it's exciting. And I started doing VR in 1993, four. At the moment, at that time, it was only interactive 3D. So we call it fish tank VR for the purpose that the screen is like a fish tank where we access virtual worlds. So we call it a fish tank VR. But today we have goggles, all sorts of goggles that we can put on that put us into a completely immersive virtual environment. Now, years ago, uh, VR tracking device only tracks your rotational information. And that is a problem because subconsciously, um, our inner ear detects motion. And when the virtual world moves laterally, sideways or forward, we don't actually pick that up in, on our physical body. So that creates a lot of motion signals. But today, VR devices are allow, allows you to be tracked not only positionally the rotational information, but also uh, rotational information and also positional information. Um, so I'm going to be introducing two types of technology: 360 VR or 360 videos, and also true virtual reality technology. Now, whilst I'm covering these types of technologies, I'm actually capturing a 360 video, which I will upload to, I will, with means permission, <laughs> upload to YouTube, maybe as a hidden video, and I'll send it to all of you. You can you can view it again, and also looking at your your expression. <laughs> okay, so this is the menu. <laughs> Um, a few topics. So, what is virtual reality, moments in history, all the way down to digital capture and artificial intelligence. This is the menu today. Now, um, the complexity of filmmaking, um, I have made very short films, so I know a little bit, I'm not an expert, but I know how complex it is to create a really, really good film. And there's so many videos online, you know, um, analyzing film and how good they are. But 360 videos and also true VR adds other dimensions to filmmaking. So this is a challenge. I'm not a filmmaker, I'm a, an expert in virtual reality technology. Um, but it is for filmmakers to decide how to take this challenge up, including how do we cultivate new talents in our education institutions for the new technologies. 
Um, my slide has been converted from Keynote to PowerPoint, so it's slightly messed up, but at least it will, it will play the video. Virtual reality is a computer technology that replicates an environment, real or imagined, and simulates the user's physical presence and environment allow for user interaction. Virtual reality artificially creates sensory experience, which can include sight, touch, hearing, and smell, although the mature technologies are auditory and also visualization. Okay, these are the only two sense, sense that we have, um, apart from devices that we can hold that allows tactile response. Okay, and uh, let's go on. So, virtual reality really, really began in the 1960s, so this was visionary. So, Ivan Sutherland um, head mounted display look, two screens, really, really low resolution and very simple shapes in a virtual environment that re responds to your movement. And so, so he was saying, is that the screen is a window through which one sees a virtual world. The challenge is to make that world look real, act real, sound real, feel real. And today we have real-time technology that has accomplished all these uh, experiences. And I'll show you a few videos of NVIDIA technology. So, so we'll break this down. It's a display as a world into a virtual world. Improve image generation until the picture looks real. We have accomplished that. Computer maintains world, world model in real time, and we have accomplished that. Two, user right manipulates virtual objects, no problems. Manipulated objects move realistically. Immersion in virtual world via head-mounted display, and virtual world also sounds real and feels real. So this was 1960s, and that's quite visionary. But we have accomplished that today with uh, with the technology that we have. Uh, with a shorter version of the definition of a VR experience, it is any which is effectively immersed in a responsive virtual world. So responsive is very important in a virtual environment. Now, um, virtual reality has, is a continuum. So we are in the real environment. And augmented reality is around here. So if you also insert a real person into a virtual world, they are all around here. But we have completely virtual environments. And this is on the other spectrum. And we have a 2D, um, we have a 2D, Version. This is an updated version of the, of the continuum, and it is the same thing, but more well-defined. But we're, let's move on. Now, VR has three things that are important, and they form a triangle. So the first is immersion. You have to be in a virtual world, okay? And then you can interact with a virtual world either by interacting with a real object or travel which is navigation in the virtual environment. So either using a trackpad, um, a joystick, or a, a device, or even walking around a, a, a physical space that is enclosed within the virtual environment. And then imagination adds to all the other bits, like reading a novel. So if you're a really good virtual environment designer, you will include imagination as part of the, um, of the I3, and that creates a sense of presence. So when we are immersed in a virtual world and we have interaction and imagination, it brings us into being present in that virtual world. And that's important for the experience of a virtual environment. Um, I'm an associate editor of the MIT Press Presence Journal, and the journal specifically studies these areas. So you can have a look um, online. Uh, presence is the perceptual illusion of non-mediation. So essentially, the interface that you wear disappears, and you're completely as if you're in the real, real environment. So the extent to which a person fails to perceive or acknowledge the existence of medium, the things that you hold your, on your hands, the mouse, and so on, so you're completely immersed in the virtual environment. That's the sense of presence. 
And various factors can induce that sense, so your visual, oral, as the main two main areas in VR. Narrative, activity-based interactivity, difficulty of the task, and these are all scientific studies. So all these things induce VR, and they're important, very important in creating virtual environments, especially in film. Okay, so VR technology, we have various headsets available. Um, my colleague here is here to help me pass this Samsung Gear VR around, and we have an application in here that we can show you. So, so we can start maybe from, well, do you want to put this on? And I'll keep talking. So once you've finished with the VR film, we can pass that around, okay? We have a, 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 some time to cover. Are you seeing something? What are you looking at? Where are you? Right. Do you have a, a headphone? Oh, it's moving. Do you have a, a, a head headset? <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm looking at a very large parasol. Okay. Very good. I'm uh, getting up. He's getting freaked out. So, so he's also being filmed in a 360 video. Okay, so this particular device is a Samsung Gear VR, and it's run by just a mobile phone. And present mobile phone GPU, graphical processing units, are very powerful, so that you can simulate virtual environments to a certain extent, but they're not as powerful as the devices that you see here, Oculus Rift and HTC Vive, which are NVIDIA Lab across there in, in the Student Services Building. Um, requires really powerful computer uh, workstation. Alienware currently supports the GTX 1070 onwards, so you can run VR on an Alienware laptop and also develop. Okay, but also we custom made our computer and we have two Quadro, NVIDIA Quadro M6000 donated by NVIDIA and they're the world's most powerful VR, professional VR device that you can have. It's, um, why do we need important, uh, uh, powerful, powerful GPU devices? Is it finished? Okay. Um, the thing is, to simulate a real world environment requires surfaces. Okay? The more uh, organic the surface, the higher the polygon count. Right? So if you look at the, uh, the cube, Every surface has two triangles. Each triangle has three vertices. And that's just a, a box. But if you increase that to different shapes, the, the polygon count increases. GPU processes every single polygon count, every single polygon, and every single vertex. So you can see, if I'm simulating my physical movements as an organic, Creature, imagine the polygon count. Okay, so so we have this pipeline that processes every vertex, every shape, every geometry into pixels, and then you have fragment shader, pattern blending, and so on to create various effects. You know, glow, for example, transparency, for example. And there's a lot of process. And in a virtual environment that is highly real and real time, you are processing billions of these little vertex, vertices, every second. So imagine the power of the computer needed. Right? This lion statue is captured using my iPhone 7. And this is in Penang, Malaysia. It's a heritage site. So I went with my camera and I took pictures 
and I took it back to my lab and I processed it and made it a 3D version. But look at the shape and the triangle involved in this particular lion. It's a lot, a lot of things to process and it's in real time. Okay, so aside from needing computational technology to process billions of uh, uh, polygons, true VR allows you to be tracked in your orientation but also position. And it's essentially using infrared technology. So if you use a, an infrared camera, you can see that every device has a tracking that emits lights that the trackers picks up, and, and the tracker then changed the virtual environment. Okay, so, so we'll move on, these are technical stuff. Virtual technology today also allows you to be freely roaming in a space of five meter by five meter maximum. Okay, that's HTC Vive. So what can you do when you want to create an experience where you can actually move physically around, and you're, being, you're actually moving in an equivalent distance in a virtual environment. Okay, we need to think about this. So, this video is a real-time person in a virtual environment. Um, NVIDIA Facebook supports that. Every wrinkle, every follicle, when you smile, Everything is in real time. If this is not in real time and you generate it just like any Disney animated film, then, it, then it's just a film. But because you can now simulate real time, just look at, just look at the wrinkle, look. This is in real time. If you can simulate something like that in real time, you can create a film, eventually that is equivalent to having a real person in a real-time environment, and you can interact with the person, and so on, okay? You can also see the translucency of the, of the ear as the sun shines through. So all this can be simulated in real time. Okay? So we'll look at another video. Okay? Running in the game's engine. Too dark, isn't it? There's no way of. Uh... Is it okay? You can't see the hair moving according to physics and wind. Every strand of hair can be simulated, and that's the point. We're going to go on. Now, this is not a film. It's playing as a film on my computer, but this is real time. Virtual environments, real time. So because it's real time, you, are, you can actually move in that environment as everything is being simulated. And as you're stepping on water, it will splash. So, so imagine the experience of being in a film where you can interact with every single thing in the world. So this is the present technology we have at the moment. It's how we make use of it. 